Okay, I thought I'd do a video uh, where I show uh, how I go about doing uh, print and play uh, games. So, I'll start off with uh, some tools that I use and uh, explaining how I do things. Okay. Let's see. Uh, for example, we got. Uh, I have a, a sheet here of counters on a project I'm working on. This is uh, one of the two counter sheets for uh, this game here, Modern Naval Conflicts, uh, 1970s. This is a game by Naval Warfare Simulations. Okay. And these are the counters for it. One sheet of the counters. I usually uh, print these out in uh, 160 gram uh, paper. All right, so that's just me. Okay, because the paper is a bit thicker, but you can print these out uh, maybe gram paper, that's all. That all depends on your liking. Okay, so that's that. Uh, here you can see the counters already mounted on a, on a, on a board on card stock. I'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. What I do is um, usually I like to work uh, with uh, small pieces. All right, because it's a lot easier to um, manipulate uh, this piece. Okay, in the case that I wanted to cut this right now, it's a lot easier for me to go ahead and manipulate this uh, little piece of cardboard here instead of having to manipulate, you know, the whole this whole uh, sheet here. All right, so this this is just me. I find it more practical this way. Alright. So that's that. Um, the cardstock I use uh, to do this is this card here. You can see the thickness here. Alright. Uh, each country uses a different name, so I'm not going to go, go into uh, how it's called. Uh, well, actually, this here in Europe. Uh, at least in my country, it's called a uh, carton mat, okay, or carton flander uh, carton. Uh, but uh, maybe in your country, it's called a, uh, in a different way. To explain what this uh, cardstock is used for, at least one of its uses, is uh, architects when they are building their. Uh, model to show a client for example if they just uh if they want to build a i don't know a shopping mall and the other client wants to see a, a model model kit uh of the, how the shopping mall is going to look then the architect will use these uh this type of card stock to uh, build his uh shopping mall all right in small scale so you understand uh, for example, what they use this for. Probably use it for a lot of other things, but just in case you have a hard time explaining your art supply shop or what type of cardboard you're, lo you're looking for, then that might help. Okay, there's different thicknesses. I'm not sure. I think this is one and a half millimeter thick. I can't remember, but for example, this is a this is a, a counter. All right, that I punched out. Uh, I don't know from where, but you can see that the thickness. All right, is quite similar. Okay. Uh, in case you can't find this type of uh, cardboard, then um, the other thing I use is uh, very simple, and actually that's the first. Uh, uh, way I use the uh, this technique was on my first uh, uh, print-to-play game. 
which is uh, from uh, uh, Lock and Load. Uh, you can use a cover of an uh, old uh, of an old uh, uh, notebook. All right, this is a, a notebook I have, and you know, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's cardboard. All right, the same on the back, you know. And if you have one of those big uh, notebooks, well, then you know, well, you don't know what to do with it. You just uh, cut out the uh, cardboard, which is this here, and you can use that. All right. Uh, the result uh, is quite satisfying. Uh, for example, these uh, these counters here. This is from this lock and load uh, game that I did uh, some time ago. It's, it's out of print now, but uh, you can get the new version. Um, this is the result. You can see the thickness here. I uh, hope uh, it focuses well. And uh, the result is quite satisfying. It's uh, practically the same uh, thing as if uh, you know you would have bought this somewhere. All right. So that's that. Okay. Another thing I'd like to explain, since we're on the subject here, is um, a lot of times, like in this case, uh, when you print out the uh, counter sheet, you'll see that uh, uh, it's not. Um, there's no uh, guide to where you have to cut, like like you can see here. Okay, I know these are uh, half inch counters. If I take a half inch counter like uh, counter like this one and I place it over this white one here, you can see that that's a half inch counter right there. All right. In the case of the white counters, yeah, yeah, I can see that I, could, I should cut uh, between these, this uh, blue line here, right? uh, following this blue line here, and that would be my one inch counter. But if I move to the top, you can see that, uh, all right, the base would be that light uh, blue there, uh, but then that whole part on the top there is, uh, you know, uh, useless so what I would do is mark that do the same on the other end and then draw a line from here to here and cut along that line okay the same you can do with your uh, vertical lines here all right the same the same goes you know mark a line and do your vertical lines all right that's a handicap uh, with some uh, counter sheets they're not uh, marked all right so uh, that's unfortunate, but yeah, uh, you know, you can see that here. You can see the same thing here, okay? I'm sorry, you can see the same thing here, you know. Some, some, you know, uh, there's a lot that's uh, worthless uh, there, all right? But if I go to the top one, you can see that the top one is quite spot on. But then when I move to the bottom one, maybe that one as well, but there's always a, you know, you have to be careful with that. There's the inconsistencies with the, the spacing between uh, counters, so you have to watch out for that. You have to plan ahead uh, uh, before you count your, your, before you cut your counters, okay? Um, I usually use, <clears throat> sorry, I usually use a, a big long scissors to cut my counters, okay, sturdy long scissors, right, I don't use a cutter, uh, I don't use uh, this, for example, to cut that, all right, I find it a lot easier to do with this, it might take a little bit longer, but, you know, it's uh, easier to do for me, anyway, that's that, what else, uh, okay, we'll get this out of the way here, uh, next, this is the map, the project I'm working on, or well, project, uh, print and play version of uh, naval, modern naval conflicts. Uh, this would be the right side, top right side of the map. The map is six pieces. All right, I got six sheets like this. You can see this would be the middle one right here. Okay, so this would be something like this. We put this together, this would be something like this, okay? Just like that. That would be. And then another one to follow here, and then that would be your three pieces of map from the top part, and then you'd have the same thing on the bottom of the map, okay? I already cut this out, but so 
since I want to show you how this how I do this. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, so we don't uh, jump from subject to subject here. Uh, you're wondering how I got the, what I use to uh, to get my counters on here. All right, to get this uh, bonded here. Okay, there's uh, several ways. Um, some people like to use this. This is a spray uh, mount uh, adhesive. All right. If you're going to use this, I suggest you use the 3M uh, brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, it's a lot better than the uh, cheaper brands. All right. I don't like to use this because this is uh, quite uh, quite a mess. It's uh, quite sloppy. Uh, you're going to spray. You know, you're going to spray. Uh, this adhesive on over your uh, your paper here or your uh, or your base here, all right. And uh, along the sides, uh, you're probably going to get some uh, glue on there as well. And then uh, uh, all this uh, glue is up in the air, and uh, uh, you know you're, you're breathing all this stuff. Uh, unless you're wearing a mask, uh, you have to do this uh, in your garage or somewhere where it's very well ventilated. If you do this in your living room, you're going to stink up your living room with the glue, uh, so I don't like to use it, all right? So that's that. Uh, what I do use, and I find very practical, is this. Everybody knows what this is, it's a glue stick, all right? And it's real easy to, to use. All you do is just, um, you know, you take your cover off, and you pop up the glue stick here, and then you just uh, spread some glue on, the surface, your base surface, you make sure you have glue all over the place, and very important, whenever you're bonding two uh, uh, things together, you have to do the same thing with your counter sheet. You have to uh, place, you have to uh, spread a glue on that uh, counter sheet as well. All right, if you want a good bond between the the two. Okay, so that's the way I uh, I bond. Uh, my uh, counter sheets to the base. Once you've got that done, all right, what you have to do as well is you take something like this, for example, that's surrounded, and you just, you know, press on it so you, you get all the bubbles and oh, you get your very flat surface and you know that everything is um, well bonded to the base, all right? So that's another thing. We'll get that out of the way. What else? Uh, we were here on the map, okay? So we were talking about this uh, uh, map here. And another thing I'd like to show you, this is another tool. Uh, this is one of those exacto uh, knives uh, with a cylinder or a, a blade, a cylindric blade, all right? It is an exacto knife. But instead of being a flat blade, then it's uh, a round blade. Like, you, you know, your pizza cutter. All right. Uh, I don't know how these are called in your country, but uh, you know, you just ask for one of these uh, cylinder cutters, and I'm sure they will know how to uh, get to you with that. So I'll just show you here how I go along with this. What I do: get one of these. All right. These are your uh, surface uh, cutters, or it's just a uh, it's a hard plastic or whatever. Uh, surface that uh, you use for cutting, all right? It's a cutting board for the same. So what I do, I just uh, place this on here. There's different sizes. I got this one, which is helps, uh, which works as well with the, this size map, all right? This is a, an A3 size map here in Europe. Uh, and since A4 is smaller, then you could use this uh, same cutting board for that. All right, very important, if you get a ruler, make sure the ruler has a flat, a thick edge on one side, just like this one, all right? Because you're gonna uh, place this cutter uh, along that edge, it's gonna serve you as a guide, and this should be sturdy, and the higher it is, the better it is, okay? And also, that it has a rubbery uh, uh, band on the back, so this doesn't slip from from underneath you, okay? It's, it'll, it'll hold on there. So, you, all you have to do is just align this here, 
all right, just like that. You have to hold this uh, quite firmly, and then you know, what you do is with decision there, cut that along there like that. Okay, and there you go. And that would be uh, the other part of the map. If I took this and I put this here like that, and there you go. There's the other side of the map. All right. You might have to overlap this a little bit because uh, sometimes uh, that's the way the uh, publishers do it. You know, in this case, I can see that the hex is a just cutting it the way I did, although I removed the excess uh, paper there, uh, the hex is just way too big, so uh, you just align this with the numbers, because it's the best that you can here, like that, okay, I can tell that to line there, uh, and that's it, and you know, there you go. I will do the same thing with this end here, and then follow that with the, uh, the rest of the map, okay, which would be this part here. Then I would take uh, this map, all right, I would take this map and place it on cardboard. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, back to the uh, lock and load uh, uh, print and play game, which uh, you can get the new version from lock and load. Uh, over at the uh, site, um, I glued it to this cardboard here. All right, you can pick up these cardboards in your supply, in your art supply shop. All right, so it's just a cardboard, nothing fancy to it. Uh, they come in a pack of fours, and then you just cut it out with your scissors. All right, and there you go. You got a neat. Uh, uh, playing board there, all right. So I will do the same thing with this, but instead of on that small one, I got this big uh, uh, board here, all right. And you can see that with this one, in this case, uh, I can fit two two maps on here, just like this, all right. Fix two maps on there like that. I can fix this over here like that, and I and, and most likely I'll have uh, to cut this top part here and then just like that there. Okay, and this would overlap like I said before, but with one sheet I've got two pieces mounted on there. All right, so that's good me as well. Okay, what else? Alrighty, I think we talked about, okay, we talked about. Uh, uh, the print and play section. Also, uh, some people uh, use, uh, instead of using this uh, method here, uh, I've seen some people use the 3M, when I say 3M, I'm talking about this brand here, all right, uh, 3M double-sided uh, tape, okay? It's a white double-sided tape about the size of an inch. I've used this before at work, okay? And uh, instead of going through all the glue stuff, then you can just buy that uh, double-sided 3M tape. And, you know, all you have to do is cut, it, cut these out and stick those, stick it on that uh, double-sided tape there, and then just cut them out. The problem with the double-sided tape uh, is that uh, once you stick the paper on there, you can't move it at all, okay? It's not like this, that, uh, you know, before it dries, you, you can still move it around a little bit. Uh, it's not the case with the 3M tape. All right, that thing is strong as hell. I mean, I've used it at work for um, for uh, uh, for stuff, and uh, and it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, it, it's it sticks pretty hard. Believe me. So uh, that's up to you if you want to use that. Uh, other people have used uh, vinyl uh, pieces. All right, you know, the typical vinyl pieces that uh, you would use to uh, substitute. Uh, a floor or you want to cover a floor or a kitchen floor or whatever uh, then there's these uh, vinyl uh, pieces that well, on one side they have adhesive and you know you just place those like if uh, mosaic on on the floor and some people use that 
for their uh, counter bases. I find that uh, a bit, uh, you know, a bit on the hardcore side because you have to then cut that vinyl. And if you have a lot of uh, counters, the, the box is going to weigh a lot because, uh, you know, uh, at least the, the vinyl pieces that I have seen, they weigh quite a lot. Okay, and also they're expensive, so that, I don't know. That's up to you. I find that uh, this is the easiest way. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's uh, talk about uh, restoration uh, and how to fix things. Uh, I've got a box here. This is uh, your fire, fire power. Okay, Avalon Hill Fire Power. I bought the second hand, and when you buy second hand things, uh, you know, the corners are all screwed up here. And uh, I'm fixing this one the way I do it. Uh, I'll use a little bit of uh, white glue for the corner, okay, and then I'll use some double-sided tape here. This is a, uh, I'm sorry, double-sided tape. This is gum tape, gum tape. Okay, you can see. All right, this is the, they. You use this for a uh, uh, framework for uh, pictures and you know or picture frames. They use this on the back of that. All right. This is uh, very cheap. You can pick this up at the, your local uh, art supply shops. All right, so you got one side of the gum here. And what I do is I cut out the size, all right, and then I just fold it uh, in half, all right, so I can have a corner made out of that fold. And all I'll do is uh, just uh, uh, stick it on uh, the corner there, just like I did here, all right. And then hold it in place with uh, you know, two laundry uh, uh, clips here. Okay, as you can see. Um, maybe you can see that uh, result there. Yeah, that's pretty. I cut it pretty bad there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was uh, in a hurry. But that's one way to fix the corners. Okay, and just you, you just wait for that to dry, and then you have there. You have your corner there. Uh, you feel that you want to reinforce that a little bit more, then you just put more tape, more of this paper tape here. All right. Uh, somebody did uh, wanted to tape this with uh, scotch tape. Uh, that's up to you. But the problem with scotch tape is that um, if you try to pull it off, you're gonna pull off uh, the paper as well. Okay. So uh, that's about it uh, for my uh, print and play. Uh, suggestions here and restoring. By the way, uh, you can use a sponge to gum the gum sided here. Okay, you wet it with a sponge. I don't like licking this because it's awful. So you can use a sponge. All right, and uh, and I will show you how I go about uh, fixing uh, warped uh, cardboard boxes or boxes that have been deformed. Mm, be it by weight or whatever. Okay, this is one that I just picked up and I'll show you how I fix this. All right. Okay, you can see the sunken box here. All right. So the idea here is to uh, steam iron the uh, wrinkle here, okay, on the on the cardboard, on the cardboard box. You can see it's quite dented in, all right. So it's pretty bad, okay. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put a, a towel on here, and then just take the iron and steam iron that and then uh, put something heavy on it and let it dry we'll see how that ends up steam on there and now I'm just gonna place a towel over that flat and then steam iron yeah. okay you can see that uh, the box is almost already flat okay pretty flattened out. Now all we have to do is uh, let it dry a bit. I'm gonna place more uh, more steam on here 
but uh, yeah, it's working out pretty good. I mean, you can you can tell we got most of the that uh, sunken uh, cardboard out of the way. So I'm gonna keep on uh, doing this here. Okay, I just put a, a towel on here, but so it soaks up a bit. But you can tell by the box compared to where, how it was before. Okay, it's totally, totally. I mean, okay, it's got a bit of a dent in there, but uh, uh, it's nothing that has to do like it was before. That that was totally squashed out. Okay. So I think uh, it sure does work pretty good. All right, and I'll just uh, I'll leave the towel in here and put some weight and let it dry so it doesn't uh, sink back down. All right. So that's that. Okay. Uh, this is the conclusion after the box has dried out. You can see. Here from a side view that that the uh, horrible uh, sunken box is no longer a sunken box okay this was the corner this whole side here was a uh, this whole side here was the uh, dented or squashed uh, however you want to call it uh, side of the box um, yeah, there's a little bit of a wrinkle here, but this is due to the, I mean, the, the, the when it got squashed, well, uh, obviously the, uh, that, um, uh, broke, uh, you know, some of the, some of the, the paper that's, uh, adhesive to the cardboard itself. You can see here, uh, you know. A little bit creased there but uh, I mean that uh, sunken box is no longer there so yeah the uh, technique works just fine just make sure you, uh, you put a uh, you put a towel or whatever okay don't wet it too much and uh, use your uh, your iron to a uh, medium heat, don't overheat it, okay? Now, this obviously is, has nothing to do with uh, what we were trying to fix, okay? This is uh, something that, uh, you know, well, it, it broke while I got squashed. But uh, the point of uh, the video was to show how you can uh, straighten out a uh, warped or you know, a sunken box, not how to fix uh, uh, edges here, which uh, you can also do with some uh, glue and uh, with some double-sided uh, uh, gum paper, okay? So, yeah, thanks. Uh, I hope it's been of help.